Let's do it. Ba, 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 boy. I'm, I'm awake. I'm alive. Let's do this. <laughs> I gotta get some energy here. <laughs> Good evening, one and all. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Pause or Wine and Play podcast. This is a, I don't know if you want to call it a bonus feature anymore. Essentially, we're just going to talk about something that we all love and know. Even you sitting in your chair comfortably listening to this podcast, which is a character in movies known as the Joker. This is something I wanted to do during our uh, Joker episode, but we didn't have time. Was like actually talk about the different Jokers that we've had, which yeah. ones we've liked, which ones we haven't liked, and see if we kind of are all on the same page or if we have wrong decisions, like or uh, wrong opinions, like our guest Kate had. <laughs> <laughs> I just kidding. Kate. Sorry, Kate. <laughs> all right then. So here is my top three Jokers, and this has come after much thought in the past. 20 minutes <laughs> but also what i've actually thought about a lot of these movies over a long time my top three jokers would be jack nicholson okay and then my number one and number two is still murky ish i think i have a number one but in no particular order are heath ledger and Joaquin phoenix and those are my top three because i think that those are the people who have really I mean, we talk about all of everything that's gone on, and this also comes with an, a very large asterisk next to it because while I have seen episodes, I have not seen seasons or lots of the Batman animated series where Mark Hamill does the Joker. At least what I have seen is still really good, but my top three would be into that. Jack Nicholson, I love. It was a super long time ago that I watched him, but it was... I loved it and I can still like remember like very iconic things and his face and just like the very thin smile as it comes up. And like, as you guys talked about like mobster and everything, super great. And then mm -hmm. obviously, as we talked about in the Joker episode recently, Hawking Phoenix is just amazing. And while it's a different version of the Joker, we really get Arthur Fleck becoming the Joker and it's a different side of it where we look so strongly into the mental health and what comes and how he really is just a man without a plan who just does stuff and things happen like without him knowing and everything like that and all of the symbolism in that movie that goes along with what he is doing and what he becomes is incredible and also Heath Ledger man just what a performance rest in peace he is incredible i can watch that movie again and again and still notice new things that he does and everything that he does with his method acting as well as what actually ends up on stage in on the screen for that movie is incredible and of course with it being done by christopher nolan i think they worked really well together as he's one of my favorite directors and i thought he Ledger just blew it out of the park i'm gonna do mark hamill's number three i remember watching the animated series a bunch as a kid and for some reason that laugh will never leave me. Like yeah. it's kind of like haunting in a way. And it's, it's this, so in my basement, if you, if, I don't know if you guys ever been to my childhood home, but in my parents Once. home basement, there's a long hallway, which was down to the end of my room. And I was afraid of it, but I remember there's one room straight at the end that, that the door was always open halfway. And I used to think that the Joker was in there or like other creepy things. And so it's cycle through like what, bad guy or monster was in there and <laughs> i used to think of the joker laugh a lot like when i was like because this is even up till i was like 13 or 14 like i was scared of this room i used to be scared of my parents basement so call me what you want i was afraid of the dark i'm a superstitious person but i remember being afraid of my parents basement because that's when i used to watch cartoons a lot and i would go down there to watch cartoons and yeah um thank you uh, mark hamill for terrifying me as a child <laughs> um, but also being one of the most beloved heroes that i ever knew I'm going to just straight up say that Arthur Fleck and Joaquin Phoenix as a Joker is my number two because that's that's the newest thing I know. He's not quite as beloved to me, but his performance was so good and his portrayal of the madman, you know, without a plan, without a purpose. I think he has a purpose, I guess. I can't say without a purpose, but oh my gosh, he did so good. And I thought the costume design, everything was good. And so, and you have to give it to, to Joaquin Phoenix for losing all that weight and just being this sullen, sulking, nasty, grisly figure that we grow to love by the end of that movie. Even though like we don't sympathize with him, we can still appreciate and love his performance. Jared Leto was a unique performance of the Joker. And I guess I did defend him and hope that he would have done better, but I'm going to have to go with Heath Ledger as yeah. my number one Joker. Like everyone else mm -hmm. probably will. I don't know. Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker, though, was so unscripted, 
beautiful, wonderful, and it was. I felt it was more real than anything else we've ever we've we've talked about with the Joker. You know, like it was. He had his funny moments. He had his serious moments. He just really was a dog chasing his tail the whole entire time. And I same with Josh. I could watch the Christopher Nolan Joker. You know the. What is it? The Dark Knight? Dark Knight. Right. Time and time and time again and still be so impressed with Heath Ledger. Yeah. And that whole film was set up so well, but also like because it's been so long, right? It's been over a decade since that came out and all of this and they've they've released everything that he went through to become the Joker and they have a lot of documentation on it and they talk about it. It, it, it's made me respect his character a lot more that he portrays. And so that, that's really for me a big thing. Oh, me, and, me and your list, Casey. It's the same. <laughs> yes, I I'm right there with you. Um, the Mark lone Hamill, Jack Nicholson lover over here. I'm, I don't I don't have a lot to add. You guys nailed your exactly why these characters are great. I guess there's just a little bit. Mark Hamill is the Joker. You know, he yeah. will always be remembered. That voice, like every time Mark Hamill does a voiceover like acting job, it's almost like like we say with Ryan Reynolds. You know, every time Ryan Reynolds gets caught, cast, it's like, oh yeah, it's cast. It's ca- they casted Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool as Pikachu, you know, kind of a thing. It's kind of the same thing. Like Mark Hamill is cast in a voice acting role doing a pretty much Joker voice, but in a different way, you know, yeah. like that. His voice is the Joker and that animated series was so good. And that version of Joker was so much fun yet. So scary at the same time. The laugh is just so perfect. That series is just so good. So number two would be my Joaquin Nix. My Joaquin. <laughs> Joaquin. Joaquin is was number Joaquin-ix. two. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix is my number two. Um, he's super. Uh, everything you guys said. I don't want to like retread everything because you guys nailed everything. But my the reason he wasn't my number one is because he doesn't seem as capable as the other Jokers, and I don't think he'd be able to stand up toe to toe with Batman. So I don't think he's my favorite. But it's a really cool interpretation that I loved to see. Yeah, and that's why I love the Heath Ledger's version so much. He's a little bit more comic booky. He's very, very smart, and he's just kind of loves the chaos, and he loves messing with Batman, and that's kind of the whole Joker's whole thing, you know. Is and I guess jo- Joaquin Phoenix hasn't Arthur Fleck hasn't had a chance to go off the Batman yet, so who knows what that if the sequel I, gets into that. Dude, we're at this part. He's still like doing magic tricks for Batman. Like he still likes him right now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah when he shows up, right? But this this Heath Ledger version, like he just loves the competition with Batman. He loves the back and forth, and that's what the Joker is. He's the Yang to Batman's Ying or whatever, however you say it. You know, and there's the opposites, and they just they can't live without each other, and they're they hate each other, but they love each other. And they can't happens. live one what can't live without the other. It's what he, happens when an unstoppable force mm-hmm. meets an immovable barrier. I mean, in the in the Dark Knight rises series that the comic book series like joker goes into a com a coma like what well, not a coma but he just stops doing everything he does when batman disappears because he just doesn't care anymore and then years and years later when old man batman comes back the joker gets a little smile and then he gets back into the game because he just loves going up against the batman and i just don't think arthur Fleck can at this point i'm really excited to see when he does like if he does become able again but uh heath ledger's like it's iconic. It's so good. That scars, <laughs> the stories, the way he acts it out, like how smart he is. It's just so much fun to watch, and it's so enjoyable, and he just does a, such a good job. But I, just, I do have to have a shout-out to Cesar Romero. Who, yeah, we couldn't go without like mentioning him on the yeah, podcast. I remember very vividly going to my grandma's house, ordering up a bucket of chicken from KFC. <laughs> Sitting in that room and just praying, hoping that we were there when Batman, the 1960s Batman, was on. Because we didn't have cable TV. And then sitting there and watching Adam West and Cesar Romero and all these other great actors just in this corny, corny, corny version of Batman. And I loved it. Well, that's that's like the same thing, Vince. You're like living my life. Except, <laughs> We're the same person. Except almost. my grandma had it on her TV, and I remember just being amazed at all the zany, weird stunts that go part of this old series. And yeah, Caesar Romero. I just remember his costume being so like stand out compared to the other. Like all of those costumes from the classic Batman series, right? So good, so great, and they look so cheesy today. But like, yeah. as a little kid, right? You're like, these are amazing, and you love it, and. As an adult, I like watch that and I like get a few chuckles out of it. And I'm like, man, this is dated so bad. But 
such a good classic thing. And, and yeah, like also I want to give a shout out to Zach Galifianakis. Hey, and yeah. I don't know. I think that the, the Lego Joker was. What a surprise. <laughs> yes. It's such a different medium. And, but it was such a performance that you wouldn't expect at the same time where you're like, why was I still like, I don't know. Moved is the right word, but just like, like, why was this so surprisingly a good version of the Joker? Obviously it didn't end up on any of our top three lists, but it's in our episode when we're talking about the best Jokers. Zach Galifianakis is still here. And people, when you mention him being the Joker, they're like, what? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, he was like, like the Lego Joker and stuff like that. And they're like, oh my, the Lego Joker, really? Like, that's that doesn't even count. And you're like, did you watch the movie? But yeah, for sure, just let us know. Because I'm sure we'll be posting stuff on Instagram, on Twitter about it. Let us know your top three jokers i'm really interested to see yeah what you guys i'd, I'd think. love to see too i'd i'd be really interested to see if it's not matching our lists in some way thanks All right. so much for listening guys <laughs> check us out on twitter at pause rewind pla i've been semi inactive just school and work sorry about that but i promise i've been getting like i've been retweeting some stuff and writing a few tweets recently so check us out there check us out with vince on Instagram. Casey's been hitting it hard too. So oh, yeah, uh, Casey it's kinda, too. It's kind of all of us over on Instagram at this point. Yeah, we're we're join the conversation. Yeah, join us. Join us there. And uh check out the website. I'm posting a couple of different things in the upcoming weeps weeps weeks concerning Halloween, a couple of our upcoming episodes on just, you know, everything. Kind of check us out there, follow us, give us a give us some love and support there and let us know what we can do to uh entertain you in your ears and your downtime while you're driving. Riding the train, whatever you're doing. Or at work. Listen to the Pause Ryan Play podcast, and we will catch you next time.